Hello and welcome to the Essence of Knowledge group. Today we are going to start our meeting with a test of Subodh. And after that we will discuss the questions a little bit. And after that we will take questions from uh, other seekers. So these are your questions. Take your time and uh, all the best. Of knowledge free us from ignorance. The path of knowledge is the path of sub subtractions that we that is we remove all the things that we have gathered. Um, so the ignorance that we have gathered is removed in this path is sub is subtracted from this path, so it frees us from ignorance. What are the qualities necessary in a seeker? Well, there are uh, many qualities that are required for a seeker in the path of knowledge. The first and foremost uh, qualities that are uh, that foremost qualities that are required in a seeker is that the seeker must have uh, intense desire to know his or her own ignorance and to drop their own ignorance. Apart from this, the seeker must also be curious. That is, he or she must be able to must be able to question even the mundane. Uh, of the things that are there that he sees and another aspect of a seeker is that he or she doesn't believe in anything without any critical thinking and he or she is also not too much open-minded because too much open-minded in a seeker makes the seeker gullible furthermore a seeker must be minimalism in his nature the minimalism is required because uh, the things that are not required can be minimized and his or her goal can be maximized. Similarly, he or, he or she must be able to memorize things that are said in the path of the knowledge, and he or she must have must also have a good communication skills as well, and he or she must have a good moral values as well. And um, and one more important thing about a seeker is that he must uh, give respect to knowledge, and he must have a deep respect for his guru as well. So the question number three, knowledge depends on memory. So is memory our source of knowledge? No, actually the knowledge is only a refined ignorance. So this knowledge is also actually not knowledge. So memory, yeah, the question is asking is memory our source of knowledge? The memory is not a source of knowledge because memory is always changing and that which is Changing is all is always false and Ill, and illusory. So since memory being illusory, the memory is not the source of our knowledge. For how are nature and truth related? To answer this question, first of all, we uh, first of all we can go to our experience, and uh, in our experience there is experience and experiencer. Nature is also an experience for the experiencer, and truth is the in truth is the experiencing, which is the experiencer and the experiences. So actually, these truth and and nature they are not separate; they are already one. There is only one thing in this existence, which is experiencing, and this experiencing uh, involves both new nature and truth as well. Question number five, what is the evidence of essential knowledge? The evidence of essential knowledge is our direct experiences and our knowledge. And who gets the knowledge of the self? There is nothing who gets the knowledge of the self because the um, identification of the self is an identification and identification is itself an experience and experience is illusory and we are not the experience, we are the experiencer. So there is no one that gets the knowledge of the self. And question number seven, how can the experiencer remain in awareness? So uh, awareness and experiencer are actually the illusion of the mind itself. There is no experiencer and there is no awareness itself. When we, when the knowledge is there that I am the experiencer, this knowledge actually gives rise to the awareness itself. But these things happening are only inside is only a play of the mind so there is nothing as experiencer and there is nothing as awareness in itself they are both the uh, play of the mind what is right there is just this um, 
zero dimensional memory less presents and there is nothing that can be said about it uh, what causes a bad experience experience is only an experience only our memory gives the experience only our memory divides the experience into good experience and bad experiences so for there to be a good experience and bad experience there must be an uh, experiencer which is experiencing the experiences as good experience and bad experience but the one who is experiencing those division of experience is also an experience experienced by the experiencer which is also false because in reality there is only experiencing an experiencer and experience experience and experiencer are just the illusion created by the mind itself how to remain in oneness there is no question of remaining in oneness because what is there is always there uh, we cannot remain in oneness the act of remaining in oneness is also an experience experienced by the experiencer which is also false and illusory so no one can remain in oneness oneness is always is what is there what it was and what and whatever uh, there will be so there is no question of remaining in oneness the one who remains in oneness is also an illusory because that is because an identification a certain identification wants to stay there as oneness and this desire to stay there as oneness is also an illusion itself what is contemplation contemplation is just uh, contemplation is the action of asking oneself out what our true nature is asking what is the nature of our experience and asking what is that which is experiencing the experiences and what is it is ultimately asking the source of who i am thank you guruji i think that's it very good attempt by subodh and you get 7 out of 10 which is a very good score especially for somebody who is very new to path of knowledge so it looks like uh, you have absorbed the lessons well only one answer was wrong and some marks were deducted for um, some uh, incomplete answers that's all but uh, you can now go to uh, step number 4 and uh, start the practice which is very simple it is simply to remain in awareness and perform your daily actions so congratulations and uh, now we will discuss in these answers in very short so first was how does the path of knowledge free us from ignorance the attempt was very good he got half marks so his definition of ignorance was correct in that accumulated beliefs and uh, everything that is unnecessary in our mind is ignorance and the path of knowledge simply helps to drop it but then the question is asking how you will need to say one or two sentences about the process that we employ on the path of knowledge which is very clear in the program we introduce the path of knowledge like this that uh, we first set up the valid means of knowledge even before that we set up the definitions accurate words very very precise definition so that there is no room for ignorance you understand the teachings completely and then the means of knowledge the criteria for truth then the analysis part the synthesis part and finally abidance which means awareness remaining in this knowledge not forgetting this thing and it is a very very systematic process those who don't do these things they actually don't get knowledge their knowledge is not very solid and this is happening since many thousand years actually we cut it down because of today's modern age and people are very busy so we skipped everything that happens before knowledge we arrive at the knowledge we shortened it but then everything else you will need to do anyway which is purification and the completion of your priya location and all that <laughs> will be will happen your spiritual progress of this creature will happen so this is how we progress on the path of knowledge uh, yes the guru is necessary the teacher is necessary somebody must direct us somebody must in- instruct us that uh, saves a lot of time number 2 why are qualities necessary uh, it was a complete answer very good answer full marks number 3 knowledge depends on memory so is memory our source of knowledge so his answer was right actually that no it is not the source of knowledge and he got half marks for that 
But the first part of the question is true that the knowledge depends on the memory. Without memory, it's not possible to know anything. So even though the memory is not a source of knowledge, the source of knowledge is our own experience uh, and abilities, which, which the abilities in, called intelligence or logical ability, uh, the discrimination ability, what is true, what is not. But still, knowledge depends on memory. And the other uh, aspect of this is that the ignorance is also in memory. Memory, we don't say that it is source of knowledge, but it is really a source of ignorance. Because where are all these uh, wrong notions, whatever we call avidya in Sanskrit, is actually stored in memory. We call them the wrong sanskar. Whatever you heard from somebody else or assumed or imagined, these are all now stored in memory. So, knowledge is actually removal of these things. It is cleaning up of memory. Knowledge is like a broom, cleans up the memory. Now, what remains in the memory is nothing really. There is, like we say, there is no knowledge on the path of knowledge. Nothing remains in the memory. That purified mind, pure mind, is knowledge. Then it can abide. Otherwise, it will be tormented by the activities of the mind. Mind is memory, same thing. So this is the complete answer according to me, according to my opinion. This should be the complete answer. That ignorance is in the memory. So cleaning up, the process of cleaning it up is, is knowledge. But how is this cleaning done? By experience and logic and by the um, pointing of the Guru. These, these are requirements. Number four, how are nature and truth related? Very good answer, they are same. Why do we uh, devote one full video on nature? Because you see traditional teachings, they sometimes they talk about nature, sometimes they talk about, about truth. The question is, what is my truth? When I say, who am I? What am I actually asking? What is my truth? And then when we investigate, we see that my nature and my truth, they are one thing, same. So, either you can approach purely from the criteria of truth or you can take the route of finding the true nature. Actually, both are same. But we included that because uh, some people may not understand. Some people may think that I wanted to know my true nature. You have told me this and that. It's okay, but what is my true nature? So, yes, same thing. Your truth is your nature. Truth is your nature and nature is your truth. Okay, number five. What is the evidence for essential knowledge? And um, he said direct experience and something else. I don't remember what. But it was not a complete answer. First, we should start with the definition of essential knowledge. That the existence is witnessing itself in its own illusory forms. Now, how to bring the evidence? You can throw away the words like I experience, experience, it's not really needed here. This is the essential knowledge. It's one line only. What is the evidence for this one line? And your whole program is nothing but evidence. The answer is also one line. The evidence is given by path of knowledge, which is systematic removal of ignorance. That is, uh, that gives us the evidence. But again, some people say that it is self-evident. Is there an experience? Yes, self-evident, cannot deny. Is there some something which is getting the experience? Yes. Objects are not without being witnessed. It is not possible. So there is the witness, there is the witnessed experience, experiencer. These are self-evident. Now are they two or one? And many people will say it is self-evident that they are one. Because we don't need evidence for this thing. The evidence is given only when there is a doubt in the mind. Why is there doubt? There is ignorance that they are not one. <laughs> Who am I? Whatever I am is separate from what I am not. This is the ignorance. And uh, now you will need to clean it up by means of knowledge. So the evidence is again always direct experience in logic. Experience shows us what is and the logic then cleans up if we had some wrong notion about it. To see things as they are is knowledge. Be what you are, end of knowledge. So, next question, uh, who gets the knowledge of the self? And uh, his answer was absolutely right. There is nobody to get the knowledge. 
the knowledge is that there is nobody so there is no question of getting the knowledge there is only removal of individual and uh, individual beliefs that's all number 7 how can the experiencer remain in awareness so this answer was wrong when you see the question you should think for at least 1 minute <laughs> what are the words mentioned in the question what are they saying and uh, if you mechanically answer from memory it will be wrong so at first he said there is no experiencer which is not right you are the exp your real nature is experiencer so again can the experiencer remain in awareness no he said there is no awareness also so probably got confused because the question is very confusing it is asking about the experiencer how can the experiencer remain in awareness the experiencer remains as experiencer it cannot become aware or it cannot do this or that it is the simplest fundamental nature the fundamental substance of existence it does not do anything so who can remain in awareness the practitioner our students individual the false individual yes the individual is false and probably wanted to say whatever the individual does is also false probably he wanted to say like this so awareness your all attempts of remaining in awareness already happening in falsehood but that is possible to do it it is possible to do it even if it is a part of the dream we are doing it to make this dream little bit more comfortable because of our wrong actions our ignorance so it became a little bit unbearable so by doing this practice we try to remain stable in knowledge in the practice is not to forget what who am i that is all there is no other practice nothing else needs to be done it is simply looking what i am once in a while few minutes few hours whatever and living your normal life so experiencer cannot remain in awareness that was the answer uh, what causes bad experience and his answer was correct in one line you can say experience is not bad and they are not good simply pictures appearing on my screen then the mind jumps in and says this was bad that was bad and it does it for a very good reason the reason is survival number 9 how to remain in oneness excellent answer i was not expecting a correct answer here but his understanding of oneness is correct so full marks there is no need to remain in oneness yes you can remain in awareness because obviously the mind keeps changing so we need to hold it somehow but can the oneness go away no so that is why there is no practice to remain in awareness and uh, i mean there is no practice to remain in oneness if you want you can invent a practice to remain in oneness it's not going to cause oneness it is already there at most what you can do is remove this ignorance remove this wrong thought from your mind that there is no oneness right now check it examine critically has oneness gone am i separate from everything and you will if you have done the systematic study like this program you will be able to arrive back in knowledge that no 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 it's wrong thought in my mind only it was always one it is one it will remain one there is no other possibility number 10 what is contemplation again the answer was correct but he got half marks because uh, uh, this is related to again practices that is the last uh, video of version 3 of program so what is contemplation simply using your di- own direct experience to check the truth of the teaching now it is a technical word you need you should not use uh, dictionary meaning here is meaning is not found in dictionary first is listening second is contemplation third is abiding so you you want to know what is listening if you search in google or open a dictionary you will not find the correct meaning because this is a technical word listening means obviously uh, getting the teaching from guru then contemplation is checking which is our step number 3 what you are doing there i heard it i wrote it down now is it right or not how will you know well the means are given to you the criteria are given to you the method is given to you you need to check the method also whether the method is right or not in all these things they are covered in contemplation and on the path of knowledge we do nothing we contemplate day and night am i wrong somewhere is this teaching wrong is truth something else which which means are 
valid which are not all these you need to spend your day like this thinking and thinking is not mindless thinking about what i did yesterday what i need to do next year who said what what is on tv what others are saying you know this is stupidity this is not thinking contemplation that's why we change the name of thinking into contemplation some people will say meditation but meditation has is a corrupt word it has 1000 meanings so we don't use it the original meaning of the word meditation was contemplation thinking only somehow people have corrupted it completely in english we don't have good word manan in sanskrit is the best word that means meditation only but when we say it in english it's wrong meaning is wrong so we say contemplation sometimes i say introspection which is even more accurate introspection because you are not focused outside somewhere in the world so this is contemplation checking of the teachings one line answer verification of the teachings how use your own experience right now right here whatever you are experiencing is whole and complete is needed that is needed for knowledge nothing more is needed right now whatever is here will give you the whole and complete knowledge and obviously the use of intelligence your critical ability your uh, logical ability because that is how you are going to check what is the real experience pure experience uh, is it uh, burdened with my own uh, notions concepts ideas thoughts feelings emotions i don't like this as soon as you see like this this thought there or emotion there just clean it now what is there yes that is the correct experience so it is a process in the mind contemplation actually we can write a full book if <laughs> if anybody is interested this subject is very deep and the people sometimes ask me how to do it how can i contemplate and so in the version number version 3 of the program Uh, we have given them a ritual because obviously they are new they won't be able to sit and contemplate properly like a proper practitioner so i turned it into a ritual if you do that ritual the ritual will ground you a little bit and that is the function of any ritual that it prepares you for the action the action is contemplation so it is ritualized now i never had this problem of contemplating i i was thinking 24 by 7 thinking means contemplation 24 by 7 writing making videos podcast this is all contemplation only loud thinking so this question never came in my mind how to contemplate the question was how to stop for me the real question was how to stop thinking why am i addicted to knowledge so that is the nature of seeker cannot stop asking and contemplating but some people asked me how to do it <laughs> i said probably there is no need but you can do it like this So these are questions and answers for today. Hopefully, everybody got benefited from these answers and questions. And the question and asking question is a important part of contemplation. So some people must be wondering why are these three um, practices, listening, contemplating, and um, abiding, they are given in the last of version three. After some thinking, I said, if I give it in beginning, people will start doing that only for the rest of their lives. So we don't waste time. We start with the proper knowledge in the beginning. Now you can spend your life listening, contemplating, abiding. If you don't want to do that, just be happy, enjoy your life. That is the least that we need to do. Rest depends on your interest. Your spiritual progress will happen only. if you remain aware in your daily life the rest are the effects of that progress they are not important whatever you do in your daily life you do it in complete knowledge being that which you are if your whole day is spent in worldly activities in total darkness then there will be strange effects on the mind strange effects here and there on the body and that is not called progress that is not progress these are strange effects only so how will you know that i am progressing that is also told in the program signs of progress happiness peace tranquility knowledge sweetness dropping the unnecessary actions helping other other people so on these this is called spiritual progress not rem and all that 
useless stuff. Kanika is saying, when we are going to group practices about awareness, when we are doing a group practice about awareness, intensity of experiments are two or three times. Could you please say something on this? Uh, it is interesting exper experiment and you should continue doing it. And it is simply motivation because many people are doing it. The person who is participating in the group is motivated to remain in awareness. And uh, there, are, there are less chances that the awareness will drop out because there is constant input. Everybody is in this aware state and that reminds again and again every second there is a reminder. So yes, there will be intensity there, some amplification of awareness. And in the same way, when people do the group meditation, whatever meditation they are doing, they sit in the group and they do it. And then they see that uh, it is better than doing alone. Why? Because the intention becomes stronger because others are also doing it. There is nothing, uh, no excuse for the mind to get up and go away somewhere else. In the same way, we do the tantric practices in group, like worship of gods and goddesses. It is done in group. Thousands of people join. So there is a lot of intensity there. It has some effect probably. So that is why satsang. We can do one-to-one -one satsang, but it drifts off in some other personal matters most of the time. So it is done in group. Now everybody is talking about knowledge. Everybody is talking about practices. There are questions and all. So its intensity goes up. And those who are conducting, conducting the satsang, they will see that their one or two hours, they pass like one or two minutes. They don't come to know that I spoke for two hours. How do we get that kind of energy? If I make you sit at one place and ask you to speak on this topic for two hours, now after two minutes you will say, I don't want to do this. It is boring. So yes, when there is a gathering, collection of minds and they are all tuned to only one topic, one thing, then there will be a stronger effect. Everybody will be benefited. So yes, continue the experiment. So I think today's questions are over and we can conclude today's meeting. Thank you everybody for attending today's meeting.